Hi guys, so we are back and I have completed the meal. So I wanted to show you because I had to let the uh, sweet potato cubes cook a little longer because they were very hard. They were fresh packaged, just chopped down and packaged fresh. So here is the end result. And I don't want to tip it too much because I don't want to get gravy all over the place and I'm going to have to clean up. So you have the uh, lighter yellow ones are butternut squash. The darker orange are the sweet potato cubes. The green is kale. And then you see just how much three chicken thighs can stretch out. And again, depending on the size of your dog, because my dog is, he's like I said, he's supposed to be a miniature dog. He's supposed to be a miniature dog, but he is so porky right now. So I am doing uh, a little cutback on his uh, portion size. And, you know, he's porky. It is my fault because I am the one that feeds him. So when I first started home feeding him, because I started home feeding him because I was going through so many different bags of dog food. You know, I tried the uh, Blue Buffalo. Then I went to the uh, Royal Canaan schnauzers and everything he would only eat it for maybe a week and I'm left with a $50 bag of dog food that he didn't finish or he won't finish I even tried mixing them so it's not no use once he gets turned off he doesn't want it anymore and then I started to look up about the food in those bags and one thing that caught my attention was they said uh if you take a piece of steak and lay it out in three days, it's, you know, it's bad, it's spoiled, it's rotten. But those dog foods that have meat as their first ingredient, chicken, beef, whatever, they're good for two to five years. And there's no way you're telling me you use fresh products. No, you had to put a bunch of chemicals on it. And that's the only way it would stay like that. Like those McDonald's, McDonald's uh, hamburgers, I guess. <laughs> but I started to read about home cooking. And what I learned is that it's not much more expensive than those bag foods. Unless, you know, if, if you, if talking about just the bottom of the barrel, you know, gas station, $7.99 doesn't even have a name brand on it, just says dog food, then yes, that's going to be much cheaper. But if you are spending for Blue Buffalo or Science Diet, Imes, any of the bigger name brands trying to give your animal the best food possible, this is no, no more. This is not more than in cost. So... There is no problem with me deciding to do this. You know, I, I buy frozen vegetables most of the time. So that way he has enough where, because, you know, like I said, I make his meals for four days. He'll eat this for four days. And I need to have enough for him to be able to be full. So again, now I am, this is my little portion cup for him. This is as much as he gets for dinner when, you know, previously I would just take his bowl and pile it in and say, hey, when it looks like enough, you know, what's going to get him full? And I just did not notice that the weight was piling on. So it's not the food because you can actually feed them less of your home food. It keeps them full longer. He has better bowel movements, more regular, more often. He was often constipated while he was on some of the others. And I mean struggling. So this, he hasn't had any constipation. He hasn't had any, you know, really messy stools. So I am really for home feeding your dog. Now, when I say it's cheaper, it's cheaper because you can get frozen vegetables for, you know, 98 cent a bag or canned vegetables because canned vegetables are an alternative. When I'm on the road and I can't cook, I get him the uh, canned chicken. Just make sure it's the one without any seasoning on it. It's just chicken. And uh, 
some canned vegetables, but that's not often. I usually try to cook everything fresh. It's just every once in a while I end up in those situations where I don't have a choice. All I have in this hotel is a microwave and I don't have a way to cook him anything. So I use my bowls, my household bowls to store it. And if I did need to do portion control, if I was going to freeze, I would definitely freeze in portion size bowls. If you freeze the, the full container, then you have to defrost the full container to give them some. So it's best. And depending on what size dog you have, maybe if you have like, say, a St. Bernard, maybe you can get the equivalent of two of these. Because again... The home-cooked food keeps them full longer. Add plenty of vegetables. You can do uh, noodles, rice. At times, I would give him bread, but again, I've cut out his carbs for now. It's not forever, but I just need him to slim down. He's way over weight. He's supposed to be about 18 pounds, and he is 32 pounds. So, he needs to, you know put on the brakes <laughs> or I need to put on the brakes for him. So now he gets only breakfast and dinner. This is the dinner container. The breakfast container is probably somewhere deep somewhere in with the dishes, but he gets a smaller portion for breakfast and then he gets a dinner container. So I am finding that this is a better way He's still full. He does not, uh, he's not starving. He's still getting two meals a day. So I would suggest if you are going to freeze it, freeze it in these portion size bowls. And if you're going to make a lump and you're not going to freeze it just for a couple days, then you can use the regular bowl, put it in there because you can scoop it out still. And when this is not, you know, as long as it's not frozen. And I always microwave it for about 30 seconds just to release that solidified oil within the chicken and the vet, you know, that's on the vegetables from, you know, being cold. I'm not microwaving it to heat it, just to release those oils. Even we have problems if you eat some cold oil, it gets stuck. Okay, so. Our pets get those same issues, and that's something we don't think about. You know, different dogs have different health issues, and schnauzers have a lot of health issues. So I'm trying to lessen them. And so far, we've been together for four years, and I've just been doing this for, for two years now. But his weight went up. Like I said, it would be days he wouldn't eat when I was feeding him the bag food. So his weight went up and now I'm working on backing him off, but I still want him at a healthy weight. You know, maybe 20 pounds would be great if I can get him down to it. He's going to be on the first edition of my 600 pound life pet edition. So I'm going to try to stop that from happening. But yes, it it is a good thing to try to veer away from the uh, hard bag food, hard bag food. But, you know, teachers own, this is just what I do. And as I said in the previous video, you should always look up your dog. Each dog has different health problems. Pugs have different pro problems from schnauzers and schnauzers have different problems from Maltese. You know, and even our bigger dogs have certain bone problems and that's another thing you can add vitamins to their food if you have a vitamin of choice some vitamins that are good for humans are also good for dogs and cats so you can look up certain vitamins to add you know if you ha if your dog is getting older or you know uh you've noticed some rashing or you know whatever the case may be that they are taking vitamins they need vitamins you can add it to this and then you have your own healthy meal with all of the vitamin nutrients that they need which chicken 
has vitamins and, and uh, minerals in it and all of the vegetables. I always add vegetables. The vegetables are definitely the filler. Now, I took this and this is only three chicken thighs. But as you can see, he has plenty of vegetables. And there will be chicken in every bite. It's, it's a lot of chicken in there. So those three thighs made all of this. And with the vegetables, and he'll have chicken in every bite. They don't even pay attention to the vegetables, but they're getting the vitamins that they need from it. And uh, I was reading some different comments going back and forth about people saying, you know, if home cooking is good or not. You know, like I said, you got to do research in every aspect. And, you know, some one of the people commenting said... Well, dogs don't eat vegetables. If they were in the wild, they wouldn't eat vegetables. But yes, they do. In the wild, they find vegetables. They find berries. They find uh, different um, beans and things like that that are wild growing. So yes, dogs do eat vegetables. They'll even eat grass, you know, to get when their body feels that they need something green in them. They're lacking something. They will eat grass. So I've seen dogs eat tomatoes off of in a garden I've seen, and that's not really good for them but you know they're going after it on their own and you know they're a stray dog it's nothing you can do but dogs need all kind of vegetables don't be fooled into thinking that all they need is meat it's not true it's not true they if they are in the wild they find them on their own that's not what you see them going after you know, in the wild shows, but they, you know, that's boring, but they do eat vegetables. So you can add vegetables or if you feel as though they don't need vegetables, then so be it. You can just cook them meat and serve it up. My baby gets salmon. He gets ground beef. He gets uh, uh, stew cubed beef. You know, I switch it up. He doesn't get chicken every day. But I will say chicken is the main. Because I will only give him one day of salmon where he may get four days of chicken. And he may get two days of, of ground beef. And I try to make it as less as possible. But I do give him the 93.7 because fats aren't good for schnauzer. So you got to get as less fat as possible. So I get him to 93.7. And he doesn't have steak every day, which steak is good for them. But also it gives them problems with their pancreas. So I try to change up everything, but what he has the most is chicken. And it's not the same all the time. Sometimes it's carrots. Sometimes it's string beans. He gets broccoli. He gets cauliflower. He gets, uh, uh, what is it called? Zucchini and, and summer squash. So there are different flavors. Even though it's still chicken, he gets different flavors. I may use veg vegetable broth, bone broth, chicken broth, beef broth beef bone broth. There are ways so that it does not always taste the same to them. And I'm not sure if that was his problem, but since I've been doing this, I haven't had one time that he's refused to eat anything. And again, there's no seasoning in it. It's just the boiled meat. Whatever seasoning is coming from the chicken broth or bone broth or whatever it is, vegetable broth. But that's where the seasoning is coming from because I don't put anything in it. It's not good for them to have uh, seasonings. Nothing. Pepper, salt, nothing. So, I will be putting this in the refrigerator once it cools down. Because, again, it just needs to be room temperature to feed it to him. But, in order to save it for the next four days, it will be in the refrigerator with a good snap lid. This is a 1.5 quart bowl that I am using here. And again, this is mine. So my dog never eats out of my, my kitchenware. 
yes, I cook it in my kitchen where I store it in my kitchen where because it's just food right now. It doesn't become dog food until it goes into his bowl. So it can, I use my own spoons on it. My dog will never ever eat from this bowl. That is not good. So he has his own bowls to eat from, more than two. So he gets his bowl, this will be poured into his bowl. This will not be eaten from this bowl, never. But to each his own again, because you treat your pet like you treat your pet, but I don't feel like it's good for them to eat from our food items. So we will let this cool off and he will have a wonderful dinner. And I hope you guys do too. It's Saturday, so you should be enjoying your day. I'm going to try to come back and do a couple more videos. I have another wine to, to uh, try as well. I'm not sure if that's going to be today or tomorrow or whatever, but it'll, it'll get there. Um, maybe later on. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. But I enjoy talking to you guys. I enjoy giving the tips. You know, take it, you know, if you like it or modify it. Remember to do your own research. That is the most important thing. And if you have any tips for me, because you are a home cooker, I will gladly accept them and look them up and see if they are for a schnauzer. But they are welcomed. They are welcomed. Or if you have something that you would like for me to mention about cooking for them. So the next time we come back with a cooking session for Mr. Bosco, it will be uh, ground beef, I think. So let me take you guys to say Bosco, to say hello to Bosco. Or goodbye, because this seems to be the goodbye. And... Hey, baby. Some people want to say hello. You're running away? Send up. Good boy. That's mama's baby. His hair was blue, and this is the result of what happens when blue wears out. It turns pink. So we need a haircut, right? Say, so we need a haircut. We need a haircut. <laughs> it went from blue to purple to now this. So... All right, guys, y'all have a good day, and me and Sir Barkington are going to have a good day as well. Bye now.